Hello and welcome back everyone, Sal here. Today I want to talk about the best ETFs for a down market. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys know my audience typically tends to be the $500 and under trader. Many of you have a lot more than that and I appreciate you watching. But today I want to introduce ETFs, preferably inverse ETFs, to a group of traders who don't have enough money to trade stocks uh, in terms of shorting stocks on margin and you don't have the necessary funds to do option trading as some of those strategies do require large amounts of margin as well. So I want to introduce how to make money while the market is going down. The market so far has been going lower. Whether or not we'll get into bear territory, I'm not sure. But if we do continue to go lower, you as a trader who doesn't have a lot of money need to find ways to profit as the market goes down. Inverse and bear ETFs are a great way to do that. Let's learn more about that right now. So what is an ETF? For those of you guys who don't know, an ETF is basically an investment fund traded on stock exchange just like stocks and it holds uh, assets such as stocks, commodities, bonds. Basically, it, it mimics an underlying asset whether it be stock or commodity all right so when you think exchange traded fund think mimic or acts like right the exchange traded fund is the derivative of whatever that underlying asset or commodity could be right so think mimic when we talk about e exchange traded funds so when you hear etfs now you know what to think about those products i'm going to show you how you're going to make money on those products on those products as well moving forward so Let's get a quick example here. Exchange traded fund. Here is Bitcoin. Now, for those of you guys who remember, when Bitcoin first came out, it was very hard to buy. You had to give a ton of information, a lot of information you didn't want to give to these third parties that are not uh, oversighted by any kind of federal or state agency. I mean, these are basically websites in third world countries and you don't want to provide them that kind of information right so what people did uh, banks or private investors or uh, uh, and exchange traded fund companies they create products to mimic bitcoin and there's one product out there right now as of the recording of this video called gbtc so gbtc is a bitcoin trust trades just like an exchange traded fund actually basically is uh, for the reasoning of this video, this mimics the movement in Bitcoin. So if I go back one slide, we see how Bitcoin uh, came out of that, that run there in 2017, got to those highs at the end of the year, and then came all the way down. Now we're seeing a resurgence in Bitcoin. Well, what happened to GBTC? Sure enough, GBTC responded appropriately. So it mimicked the movement in Bitcoin, as you can see here, Right now, current price of that is $9.98. So through your broker platform, whether it be E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, and others, you can search GBTC and in your equity trading account, your stock trading account, now you can buy a product that mimics the movement in Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin continues to move up, GBTC continues to move up as well. And you benefit from that. So that is a way that exchange traded funds work, all right? That is how they work. Now, let's talk about how when it goes the other way around. So why trade inverse ETFs? Well, shorting can be very, very expensive. We know that there are borrowing costs involved in shorting, right? And, and shorting takes away from margin, right? Margin, many companies, uh, brokerage houses already require you $2,500 for you to even short a stock. Some of them require even more. Some of them don't even allow it. For example, Robinhood, they won't even allow you to short stock. Uh, so we also know that that borrowing cost is calculated daily. So for example, stock like Tesla, 2.1% on a daily basis as you're shorting the stock, 2.1% of that trade value is docked against you every day. That's very, very expensive. So for traders who don't have a lot of money, you know, shorting a stock like Tesla that has that kind of interest or borrowing cost is out of the question. Inverse ETFs, again, no need for margin because they trade just like stocks. An inverse ETF 
going well going up if it's an inverse right as the market goes down you are allowed to buy it just like a stock right and they are available on brokers like Robinhood like TD like E-Trade you can look those up and I have a list for you at the end of this program so e inverse ETFs allow you to take positions whether it be a particular sector or give you whole market exposure so I've got two tickers there are examples SKF which gives you the ultra short financial so if you want to short instead of shorting individually uh, Goldman Sachs or SunTrust or Bank of America you can take a position in SKF and as those stocks go down SKF goes up because it's the complete opposite it's the inverse of the movement in those banking stocks and really helps you remove that single stock risk right so single stock risk for example if a Goldman Sachs goes out and buys another company tomorrow you know if you were to short Goldman Sachs you're gonna get hit hard right I mean that that thing's gonna open up up big well if you are in in, in the ETF that may include Goldman Sachs your exposure to that news is going to be a lot less It's going to be a, not as painful as if it you were uh, shorting the stock or in a in an option for example in that stock as well sh which is basically an inverse of the entire s p 500 so the largest 500 companies if you want to take the inverse side of that move you will buy sh sh is basically the inverse of the s p 500 so what are the downsides of exchange traded funds well the some of the things that make them great can also make them kind of scary so the downside is the fact that they do daily rebalance and that could be good and bad right so when we talk about daily rebalance we mean that because these these etfs mimic the day-to-day -day movements in the sectors or a market as a whole they you know for example when we talk about some of these leveraged etfs one day you get a down day that's you know you get a nice three percent move right on that inverse etf well if the market bounces and it bounces pretty aggressively it could come back to harm you where it has a six percent seven percent up day right where the inverse pays going the other way so it can be very dangerous up and down so inverse ETFs are a great way to play on the short term or medium term or eliminate some of that risk by not uh, getting into positions that are heavily leveraged so staying away from those 3x or 2x there are many many ETFs inverse ETFs that are not leveraged right that are not leveraged uh, that offer you a great return right that offer you a great return that you can take advantage of today right but le leveraged ETFs can be dangerous and have been very dangerous because again we've been in a 10-year bull market so when you look at performance the 10-year leveraged ETFs have been some of the you know uh, leveraged ETFs that are uh, that are inverse have been some of the worst performing over the 10 years why because the market's going up and obviously an inverse ETF that does better when the market goes down pays the price so that is why now with the market kind of going sideways unsure where we're going to head and possibly headed lower some of those trades that have really suffered are going to be the ones you're going to want to to, to bet the farm on all right so an example of a leveraged ETF TZA which is the small cap bear doing very very well right now SQQQ which is the ultra short version is a three times leverage product uh, SQQQ three times leverage product excuse me I'm repeating myself here three times leverage product of the QQQ so technology based plays mostly found on NASDAQ are in that SQQ is the inverse it will allow you to benefit as the market goes down for technology stocks we're going to show some charts here in just a bit now one thing you need to realize about ETFs is that some of them do lack liquidity and the only reason they lack liquidity particularly when we talk about inverse ETFs is because the market has been in a bull market right so if the market is going up I'm going to be buying ETFs that are going in a direction the market is going I'm not going to buy uh, ETFs that are going the opposite way so that is a reason for 
the low volume that you see on many of these. Also, there are a lot of ETFs out there. There are a lot of inverse ETFs. And some of those designer-focused ETFs that are really, really niche-based, yeah, those are going to be not as popular as the ones that give you a macro or, or, or a whole market uh, participation, right? So understand that and, and be well aware when you're going into some of these trades, right? An example of that, that designer trade is EMTY. EMTY is a ticker that basically is called the decline of the retail store ETF. So they basically go out and find losers among the retail space and as those go lower, this particular uh, inverse ETF goes higher or, or gains value. But again, not very popular, so not a lot of people buy that. Also, I want to re reiterate that action brings liquidity, right? Action brings liquidity. So as the market continues to go lower, you will see some of these ETFs that haven't been very popular start to gain quite a bit of momentum and start to become very, very liquid, meaning that we start to get more money coming into those uh, into those tickers, all right? So let's look at an example. REW, for example, is the short of the technology space, right? And REW, again, an inverse ETF that was losing for a long period of time as the market was going higher. Right as we started to get some volatility come into the market, notice the amount of volume that comes into the trade. Notice the amount of volume that comes into the trade. So this lets you know that again, when things start going the right way, these are the try these are the type of plays you're going to want to be, be in. Right as the market go continues to go lower, you're going to want to run to some of these ETFs that are inverse that allow you to participate and profit as the market goes down, all right, as we see money coming into REW. All right, so here's another great ETF, and I'm going to, you know, give you a list here, some of my favorite to end out uh, the show. So inverse ETF for down market, HDGE, this is one of my favorites. This is one that's gaining quite a bit of value right now. You're going to want to be in this if we continue to go lower. Now, I do want to stress that you want to be very careful for reverse splits, right? These are really beat up, so you could see this at a reverse uh, at a reverse split price a lot higher than what you see on the screen right now. Right now, it's showing that HDGE is going to be at 675. Well, when you're watching this, it could be a lot higher because as they get beat up, they reverse split to kind of keep them listed, right? So it won't harm you. Uh, if you got, let's say, $500 in it, you're not going to lose any money on a reverse split. I want to let you guys know that. You just lose the, uh, like for example, if you had 1000 they do a two for one. Now you've got 500 So you don't necessarily lose money. I want to stress that uh, to you. All right. HDGE, a great bear market ETF that takes positions in stocks that aren't doing so well. Again, if the market continues to go lower, HDGE will go higher as you can see it's already broken above the 25 moving average if you've watched my video before where i talked about the 25 moving average and how the 25 as well as the 50 rsi are really where you want to be in a stock to to in order for you to get its maximum potential right for it for you to get its matchable potential so hdge is exactly where you want to be if you continue to believe that we could see volatility come into the market and the market continues to go lower. Let's see some other great tickers. RWM, right? RWM, an inverse of the Russell 2000. Now, this is a leveraged uh, ETF, I believe. Actually, I don't, actually, it might not be leveraged. Do it, do your research on that. Uh, if it is, I know it might be just 2x or it might not be. I have a feeling it's not because IWM is not leveraged and IWM is the inverse of RWM. Again, this includes the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 made up of very small, medium-sized companies that are heavily leveraged, take on a lot of debt, that many of them have gone higher on the fact that we've had very low interest rates uh, on the market. So a lot of them are, are trading at all-time highs. If Again, i got to continue to say that if the market continues to go lower, 
Look for RWM to move a lot higher. The stock is up well over $4 from some of the lows recently, so it continues to go higher as we see volatility come into the market. All right, SH. SH, now this is one of those, again, the market-wide. I talked about SH earlier. As you can see here, breaking above the 25 moving average, this is not leveraged. This gives you the opportunity to get into uh, the selling pressure that's entering the market and benefit off that. So SH, again, coming off the lows, up almost $2 a share there. So you can participate. This is not shorting. This is not going to require any extra capital, whether you only have $500 or $1,000. You can type in SH into your platform and buy some of this uh, exposure. The triple Qs, we talked about that, as you can see here. Again, a leveraged product. So again, as, as long as the market continues to sell off, you're doing all good. When things, unfortunately, don't go the right way, it can come against you really quickly. So it's a, it's, a, it's a big gamble here because you can make a lot of money really fast and you can lose a lot of money really fast. So again, when you're dealing with these highly leveraged 3X, be very, very careful here. These are really kind of lotto plays, but again, uh, if you just have that golden touch, this is where you're going to want to be. TECS. This is a technology, so it's somewhat similar to SQQQ, but I would say a little bit more specific, a little bit more specific, also giving you leverage capabilities at 3X. Again, huge moves here, right? Huge moves that are going on into TECS right now, coming from 12, now you're at 15, so you're up well over three, sometimes almost $4 a share from some of the low. Hey, how many people here would want to be up, up $4 a share in a two and a half weeks, wouldn't you? Yeah, me, definitely me. And as you can see here, look at the volume, right? Look at the volume, here's your indicator. Volume is another indicator that, hey, the money's coming into this trade. There's some people who are excited about what TECS has been doing over the last couple weeks. So I might want to jump in there myself. So TECS is one for you to watch. SSG. This is what I, uh, I, you know, we talked about the designer ETFs. This is what you would call a designer ETF. It's very niche focused. Semiconductors only, right? We've got a lot of China uh, volatility enter with the trade wars and whatnot. A lot of risk there. So we're seeing a lot of movement coming into SSG. Now, this is the monthly chart, still showing below the 25 moving average on the monthly. But I'm going to switch to the daily to show you how and where this money is coming into. And you can see here, look at that, right? We've got almost five years of trading on this chart, right? As you can see, it's been a big loser for five years. And all of a sudden, boom, look at this month alone. We've got a volume a breakout volume winner, a one-year breakout. This is the largest amount of volume that came into SSG over five years. That says something. And let's take a look at why. Look at that, right? So we can see here it's broken above that 25 moving average. And look where it's going. It's going from literally 10 to 15. You're up $5 in the month of May. $5 in the month of May. So a, a big reason to be involved in leveraged or inverse ETS are the fact that, again, when the direction of the trade is going your way, you want to be here. This is where you want to be, particularly if you don't have a lot of money. All right. So here are some honorable mentions. Press pause. Take a look at them for yourself. It's your boy, Sal. If you've really enjoyed this video, go ahead and press like on this video for me. Press subscribe if you're a first time watcher of me. I'd like to come back live. I just want to warm up the channel a little bit more. So again, if you like what you saw today, click subscribe. Leave a comment for me if you're interested in a topic uh, for me to do. Leveraged inverse ETFs, jump all over it, folks. These are going to be a lot higher, and we're going to see an amazing 2020, late 2019 for some of these plays. See you then. Take care.